Is it time to sell right now? That's a really important question and the goal for today's show. I'm going to answer it in about 60 seconds, so just bear with me. We're almost into extreme greed. The last time we got here was almost nine months ago, back in December of 2023. So as we approach extreme greed, we want to manage risk. What does that mean? It means the last time we got here, we, got a, we hit a high of 83, and then we eventually faded lower for fear and greed. But the market actually went higher. And with a lot of stocks having big moves today, like Micron up by 15, like China up by 17% in the last week, uh, looking here to uh, emerging markets up by 6.6% in the last week, that's a really important question. Another way to think about this is managing risk. So as of right now, where do you think the next 5% move is going to be? Drop me a number one in the comments for down and number two for up. So let's make this a very simple story because it's been about, been about 60 seconds. As we go into extreme greed, would it have been wise to exit last time, meaning sell all of your stocks? Well, no. The fear and greed did eventually go lower. But if we look to the S&P 500, again, is it time to sell right now? Well, what happened here in uh, December of 2023? Oh, my goodness. We went to a new all-time high. And as, and as long as we were in new all-time high territory, the rally continued. Oh, so fear and greed went lower, but we went from roughly 450 all the way up here to 570. That's correct. So let's read the note now because that's the really important part. All right, let's zoom in because I'm sure it's a little bit hard to see on, on uh, for some people, right? Friendly reminder um, that we're now into extreme greed. And what we want to do is we want to manage risk, which means setting stops, raising stops, and trimming. I exited some stocks today, so even I broke my rules, but... I'll explain that on tomorrow's stream if you guys are inter interested. So what this really comes down to is that as we're starting to get into the part where it doesn't mean there's no more upside, it just means that the risk reward is no longer favorable, which means that it's not two to one, uh, three to one, four to one, because I think there's probably equal risk for us to go down to, uh, where's my poll here? For us to go down to 544, which would be, hey, that's like pretty strong support. We're up to 600. Uh, I think there might be a little bit of turbulence as we get to there. I'll explain a few reasons why now. So if we think about this, we're going to be going into the close of the quarter. Uh, I believe that's going to be on Monday. There's going to be a huge rebalancing. People are looking for a down move into October, which is also what happens historically into an election. Why would we go down into an election? Well, remember, the stock market loves certainty. So what are we not going to get as we go into the election? We're not going to be certain. That's the definition of uncertainty. However, on election day, if you remember what happened with Biden, mega big booms, we went straight up. So if we go back in time here to uh, where is November? Ah, right here. There's November 2020. Up, 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 up. So after we get certainty, market goes up. As we're facing the uncertainty, what happens? October down. Oh, my goodness. We bought them in October. We uh, bought them in October. And then going here to 2023, we bought them in October. Are you ready for a potential drop? Is it time to sell right now? Well, again, let's think about this. If you're going to be a wuss, yes, sell here. If you're going to be able to buy on a back test, again, set a stop, raise your stops and trim. And if you trim, you're able to buy back at a lower cost basis. The reason why this really matters is because if you don't get a reload, it means the share price is going higher and you have less of something that's working. On the flip side, if the chart comes back down, you're not going to be all sour because you're able to re reload on the dip before it ultimately goes higher. Another way of thinking about this is the same way that I often say, which is, what are you going to regret more? If you want to see these resources, link is in the, in the description. So it's all about what you're going to regret more. Everyone's going to re regret both of these things. If you don't own stocks right now, all well, you're like, oh my God, we're going into extreme fear. Yeah, well, look, I showed you. We went a lot higher. We went from uh, 450 all the way to 570. That's a mega rally. And I'm going to show you more things in the next few days, which could support this thesis. But again, really just want to send you a friendly uh, warning as uh, a lot of stocks are making huge moves higher. All right. A few more quick things I want to get through here. So we got through uh, GDP, initial jobless claims, and Jerome Powell talking today. So now tomorrow we got PCE. So with all of this fear and greed stuff, what really matters? Let's make it so simple for you. And uh, just before I do that, I'm going to ask you for a favor. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up or subscribing to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. So to not waste time, if you can't watch more, as at, after, we're, after blah, blah, let's take a second here and uh, catch my breath. After fear and greed started actually dipping down, as I showed you in the chart before, we were in an all-time high, which means it doesn't require increasingly higher levels of greed to go increasingly higher. Price is king. So if we remain in blue sky territory, we pass. 
What's important here is that we backtest and pass previous areas. So what used to be resistance, turn into support. What used to be resistance, turn into support. Well, wouldn't that same thing apply here? Previous resistance needs to act as support. So if we haven't ran a test here, we don't actually know if it's support. I think it will be. It should at least provide a dead cat bounce. Really? Yes, it should at least provide a dead cat bounce. Is it going to hold though? That part I do not know. Here's what I'll be watching for specifically to know what's more important to the market. It was China and Micron overnight. And then now if we look here again, good data is good. Green, 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 green. Ah, market's happy. Market is happy. Jerome Powell spoke in a two-minute pre-recorded video. Who, who really cares? And then tomorrow, we got core PCE. So here's what I'll be watching for. And you can tune, tune in with me as I stream live at 9.15 a.m. tomorrow. Again, if you want to hang out with, again, uh, daily live at 9.15 a.m. Um, I think, again, think here. I don't know for sure. I need to see the feedback. I think the market cares more about labor. So good numbers on labor are good because it means the labor market's strong. I want to see what happens with these numbers tomorrow. I don't know what that one's going to be. But if it's red, do we get a red reaction? If it's green, do we get a good reaction? Because I think the market's going to move more oversized to jobless numbers. And if that's the case, what's more important here? I'll show you. I'll give you a preview for next week. Because I did, did this on the stream this morning. Uh, Fed, uh, Fed Chair Powell speaks next week. I couldn't find this one here. We're going to get uh, European CPI. They're down to 2.2. Is it going to be 2? Man, the Fed looks like they're really behind right now. And then if we look forward to Friday, non-farm payroll, unemployment rate, average hourly earnings. This is the big one. You know how anxious people used to get around CPI and PCE? Well, this is the one that matters. It's next Friday, October 4th. So if right now you're scared, or again, like we talked about before, if on the previous dips, you got increasingly nervous that, oh my God, if only we can go back up to where we were and you did not trim and you did not trim, and then we also revisit here, you're going to be filled with a lot of regrets. So what you want to do is think about what you're going to regret more and then try to avoid what you're going to do more. And don't exit positions fully unless you're going to be okay with it going completely the other way. I exited a whole bunch of stonks today. I'm talking uh, a lot. I'm now, I'm now down to like roughly 30 stocks on my watch list for my 401k account. And the primary reason for that is because I'll explain it right now in about 30 seconds. And uh, last thing here. You also want to think about what is the general feeling you're talking about on different time frames. So for the daily chart, man, everyone's euphoric. I haven't seen a bullish uh, poll in a long time for where we're going to go. Everyone's bullish. I'm like, oh, crap. Right? Everyone's out there telling everybody how we're going to be rich. Yeah, buy Micron, buy NVIDIA, buy SML, buy whatever. We're going to make money. Everyone's going to be rich. I'm like, uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Maybe we're going to go down into October. How do we go down into October? Well, first of all, we got to stop going up. And this market just wants to go higher and higher and higher. So there's always going to be selective names. And here I'll give you a specific example because um, I talked about this one on the stream this morning. I purchased this stock at 28.31, uh, so 28.33. Uh, and then uh, I got it 28.41. I had bids in that started filling this morning that were good till cancel. And the reason why I bought this one is very simple because I'm looking at it thinking, all right, I think this one can go up, right? I think it's going to go up. My algo thinks it's going to go up. I bought it right on the 50 MA. We're seeing a curl here on the monthly. And one of the stocks that I sold, again, not like this one funded all the trade, but I'm like, well, as of right now, as I look at MMM, I'm like, well, I, don't, I wouldn't buy this thing fresh right now. So I actually fully exited it now. I see a potential pattern here where there's going to be resistance. So for this stock to move an additional, uh, sorry, let's go back here. Let's go to MMM. For this stock to move an additional 30 to 50%, it's not that it can't do it. I just think it's going to be a little bit more difficult than if this stock does. So I loaded up a full position on the stock now. Um, it's about 7% of my account. And I think it's going to push off from here. So I think the stock can roughly double. So that's what that's what I'm doing. I'm rotating. Again, as we close out the third quarter or Q3, you got to think about what are the ideas you like for the end of the quarter and into 2025. The ideas that worked are not that have worked won't always be the ones that will work. Remember that quote from Ray Dalio, the worst investment investment, investment advice ever? Yeah, I sold some Tesla too. I exited it today. I think I got my last sell up here at roughly 250 something. I forget. Why? It felt right. High, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, lower, high. Massive pennant. This reminds me of NVIDIA. Why NVIDIA? Because it looks like a massive pennant too. Right on resistance after three lower highs. Last thing here. I can see a massive diamond, pennant, triangle, whatever. Right, I'm just dropping it, drawing it sloppy here, but I'm not sure what's going to happen. So if I'm not sure what's going to happen and gap ups are for selling, 
We got to see what happens tomorrow. All right, that's it for today's video. So click the one on the left or subscribe on the right, and I'll see you guys at 9.15 a.m. tomorrow. Thanks so much.